Hey guys, Meowinton here. So I decided to do a series of OTP 17 on the Cincinnati Reds because I was on the subreddit about a month ago or so, I don't really remember when, and I saw somebody that said they were struggling a bit with, uh, with the big red machine. So I decided to give it a shot myself. I think they said they were on about three or their third save. Uh, so I guess it's a little bit challenging and uh, I'm not really quite sure why. So one thing I wanna say, before you start watching this, I guess, is if you were prepared to watch somebody who's very good and understands baseball extremely well or is really good at OTP, then this is not the series for you. But if you're someone who enjoys a little bit of the underdog story or seeing people who aren't really quite super skilled try to overcome stuff, then uh, I think you'll like this because I've been out of the sports scene for quite a while. I'm just getting back in the baseball. I'm pretty new. I guess I'm not too new anymore, so I don't really have that excuse, but I just uh, haven't really learned it too well still, and uh, I've been playing a little bit of OTP for a few months now of uh, 16, so my first time on 17, and I'm deciding to challenge myself a bit with the Reds on this one. So uh, let's see, the goals are, alright, every time you get your first couple goals is always basically the same thing, don't suck, reach playoffs within a couple years. So let's actually take a look at... I'm curious to see if it's the salaries, if that's what's causing it. So how much money do we have? Would it be under accounting? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, there seems to be money to work with. Not too much, but it doesn't seem terrible. Like I could maybe make something happen here. So we're paying 90 million in contracts this year and then next year it goes all the way up to 107 million wow so 17 million boost I can definitely see why it's a uh, a huge boost to Devin Mesoraco Brendan Phillips goes up 1 million Homer Bailey goes up a million 2 million on Votto Votto's got a really really long contract which I definitely understand because it's Joey Votto he's basically like the star of the Reds you know he's gonna be the uh the veteran presence, but this does seem like a really long contract, because he's going to be... Okay, so he's going to be 32, so... 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and then team option. So we're paying him 25 million plus for basically his 35 to 39 year seasons, which is a little bit risky. I mean, he's good. Don't get me wrong, he's very good, but he might decline a lot and this may end up hurting us, but luckily uh, we start losing a lot of the other big contracts by then as well. Uh, I, I was looking a little bit earlier and Homer Bailey doesn't really seem that great. He seems pretty good, but after getting hurt, I don't know if he'll come back and be that great. I mean, he's, he's a three star, two and a half potential. His stuff, movement and control seem to be pretty good, but he only has about two really good pitches and then three of his pitches are a little bit average at best I'd say um, Brandon Phillips who was just I don't know how he did so well in 2015 I mean he had a really good year but like I mean I guess he's had like consistently good years but his stats definitely don't speak to or his ratings don't speak to that because he doesn't have I mean I guess he has good contact and avoid case it's true doesn't have very good eye and discipline though so he almost yeah he doesn't seem to walk too much except in 2011 interesting I don't know if I want to keep Brandon Phillips though like, it's, it's a pretty big uh it's a pretty big contract and he is 34 about to be 35 so it'll be 36 here 14 million he's probably gonna start seeing some decline as well himself so yeah I'm probably gonna be looking to ditch Brandon Phillips one thing I was looking at was Devin Mazzaracco potentially getting rid of him he seems like he's gonna get a huge bump in contract here up to 13 mil which potentially getting rid of that could, uh, could really help out. Because that means in 2018 we won't have Phillips. Won't have to worry about Mesoraco's gigantic contract. Maybe I'll be able to ditch Bailey by then as well. Which will really free us up to setting us up for 2018 to be like a big uh, rebuilding year. And if not, then maybe we'll work for a little bit later to 2019, 2020. Maybe get some rookies in the draft and uh, you know work them up and then get the team ready around one of these years around here. But Esoraco seems to be pretty average for what uh for what he's get for what he's being paid. 
But let me see, when, when does contracts start? Total years when signed for, so 2016, so 2015 he signed. Yeah, that would make sense because he had this crazy breakout year here where he posted a 3.9 war. So that's why he nailed that contract for a couple more years and then he just really, uh, I don't know if he got hurt or what or if he just struggled and he, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. That was really weird. But I might like to get rid of Devin Nesoraco as well. Uh, let's take a look at the lineups too. I want to see what we're looking at. So that's interesting. So Mesoraco is getting that huge contract, but Barnhart seems to be the who they had as the starter. Yeah, so 2015 they played him as a starter and then he played as the backup it seems this is really strange why do you pay him so much just to put him as your backup so yeah i mean if if i can just get rid of Messerako now i mean i'd be more willing to use barnhart as our current catcher even though he's not great at the bat he's good catching rating good arm good ability compared to this like i, I value good defense on a catcher more than i really do offense honestly and if he can give us a full year of 250 324 i'd be more than happy with that to be honest i don't really expect too much out of my catcher uh vado already know vado Ivan De Jesus, who seems to have pretty good ratings. Second, third, short. He can play left field too, so he's pretty flexible. Um, he's played a lot of triple A. Did he really just get called up? Because his first year wasn't that great. He didn't really play the full year either. Yeah, he seemed to always be a backup for the Dodgers, then he got traded. Eugenio Suarez, who, again, doesn't seem that great in terms of ratings. Um... Another pretty young guy. His first year in the MLB, he posted 242, 316, and then 280, 315. So he seems to be more of like an average guy. Doesn't really get on base too much. That's all right. Uh, Zach Cozart, who, wow, he is great defensively. Really good shortstop. So even though he doesn't seem to be like an amazing batter, um, let's look at full year. So 240, 280, yeah, he's a... Uh, he definitely struggles to get on base really, really hard. His averages are just barely at like 250. This year, 220. Wow, he had an awful 2014. Hmm. All right, so he's probably going to be like an end of the, of the lineup kind of guy. He has some stealing and speed, so who knows what, what about him. But he's really good defensively, so it doesn't hurt to have good defense out there. Adam Duvall, this really doesn't do him justice. He's so much better in person. I guess maybe in OTP 18 he'll end up going up quite a bit because he's having a good year. But in this game, wow, he is just, uh, he is very poor. Awful avoid K's 9 discipline. His contact is like basically average at best. I mean, he has some pop to him, but that's about it. Yeah, wow, so we're going to be struggling really heavily. And then obviously Billy Hamilton, who everyone knows is a terrible batter, but he has lightning quick speed. And then Jay Bruce, who should be good. Uh, not the best 2015. Not the best 2014. I mean, he, he had solid years before then. It's just the last two that he struggled. So hopefully he can pick it up. But again, he has pop too. He's got good home run power. At least has better contact. Decent discipline. Strikes out a lot though. Yeah, he's got a huge strikeout problem. Can we look at the... Uh, Expanded batting stats, look at the strikeout percentage. Yeah, he's near about 25%, which I guess isn't 22, which is bad, but I guess it could be worse. I mean, yeah, I guess it could be worse. Not very good, says Tyler Holt. Ooh, wow, yeah. There's a lot of work to be done. Brandon Phillip, wait, Brandon Phillip? Oh, yeah, he's not even the starter, too. He's just... All these people are just eating up money without being starters. Well, let's take a look at the pitching. So these are some names that I definitely recognize. Iglesias and Desquafani I do recognize. Uh, I think Hoover, Singrani, and Diaz. Blake Wood, isn't this the guy that's on the... No. I'm thinking of the other guy. So this is definitely the star pitcher. He's very highly rated, good ratings, and he's very young. Bryce Iglesias, I think I've heard about him, like IRL being talked about as a pretty highly touted young guy, not really sure. 
I haven't really been following him too much, I don't know. Didn't really post the best 2015, but he is pretty young. He's going to be turning 26 very soon. 1.64, he had a good whip. One, eh, home runs, I guess he could have... He gave up 11 in 95 innings, I guess it's not awful. Didn't really walk too many with a good K count. I'm not really good with fit, but let's check it out anyway. Pitching stats. Oh, it's under edit expanded to. So 366 FIP. So he had a lower FIP than his ERA at the very least. Which means I guess he was pitching better than his ERA shows. Uh, Anthony Desclafani. Great movement and control, which is actually something I really like out of my pitchers that people will notice, will, will start to notice, is uh, I can be okay with someone not having the best stuff as long as their movement and control is good. And also they have to have at least three good pitches. So Anthony Desclafani is like right up my alley in terms of what I like out of pitchers, at least at their bare minimum, you know, like I, I like to have this stuff even if their stuff isn't that great. So yeah, pretty good. His whip was really high. Did he just allow a lot of hits? Yeah, 194 hits over 184 innings with his 55 walks. So even though he didn't really walk too many, he had a high whip because he allowed quite a few hits. But 3.1 war, not bad. Um, really quickly, I guess it's just as good as... 369, so same with him. Higher FIP, or lower FIP than his, than his ERA. Brandon Finnegan, wow, this is a very interesting guy. He's only 22 and they have him up here. So he still has room to develop his control, but for now he's going to really struggle with his walks. Yeah, as you can see here, even though he's only pitched a handful of innings, 4.8, 5.0, 4.5, 8.3, he just gives up a lot of walks. It seems in 2015 they give him the most innings ever at 20, oh, actually no, that's not, he's had more innings before. Hmm, do I even want to have this guy called up? Like I might want to put him one more year in AAA, not even the year, but like half the year in AAA. See if he can con or fix his control metric a little bit. Maybe fix his uh, changeup, you know, make his changeup a little bit more refined. Because if he can get this up to like a 55 control, get his changeup closer to 60 then maybe. Because, uh, you know, he might have good stuff and good movement, but he's going to be giving up a lot of walks and he's not going to really be too valuable to us, especially as our number three guy. Alfredo Simon. Yeah, wow, they're... No wonder they have him as a three slot. We have nobody really in our in our back half of our rotation. So let's look at some relievers. Uh, Hoover has no control. Nothing too amazing. Pedro Villa, Villarreal. Singrani. Amazing stuff on this guy, but I mean, yeah, he's got great pitches. He's got decent movement, even if his control is a little bad. Oh, okay, that's not a little bad. That's a lot of bad. 6.7, 4.0, 5.0. He also allows a lot of walks. I don't know if I really want that in my bullpen. All right, Cotham looks pretty solid. Uh, gave up a lot of home runs in 2015, but he only pitched nine innings, so I guess you can't really give him that, give him too much flack. Wood doesn't seem too amazing. Uh, just. All these guys seem to be just triple A guys or something. There's there's almost no Jumbo Diaz, huh? Well, isn't the guy who's really heavy? I remember in the like stats page, you know, who are the heaviest in the game in 2016? Jumbo Diaz would show up as one of the biggest guys. I could have sworn he was fatter than that, but uh, he seems to be our most reliable pitcher. Very solid closer. A lot of K's. Not the best whip, I guess, but not too high. I'll accept it. Gave up quite a few home runs, though. Nine and 60 innings. Not, I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't like to see that many. Maybe if he was down at, like, seven or six or something. Yeah, six. 4.18 ERA. Again, looking at the FIP. Although, I guess FIP would be a little different. Is it different for relievers? I'm not sure. 375. 0.4 war. Nothing amazing. But he does seem to be really good. So, maybe he'll have a great year this year, hopefully. Alright, well, that's the lineups, that's the pitching. Um, I guess we need this, or I need to look at, where is it? Um, team home screen, maybe? It's somewhere, I forget where. Here we go. 
minor leagues. Um, let's sort by potential. Actually, one of the things I need to do first is I need to do... I need to get a uh, new scout that suits my needs. But it seems like we have pretty solid potential um, prospects here. I mean, a good amount of them, but then again, I don't know how good this scout is. So I need a different scout to reevaluate everything. A couple really young guys who won't be up for a while, but let's take a look at these guys. Third base, he seems like he's going to have pretty good potential. He needs to fix his strikeout issue, though. He's basically going to be another uh, Jay Bruce where he just strikes out a lot, but he has good home run power. I mean, he's doing. he did well in AA. He did well in A+. Plus. Yeah, okay. Cody Reed, oh, here's where we need a pitcher. Oh, wow, it looks like he's going to have amazing control, and his stuff and movement's definitely going to be very uh, respectable. So we might pull him up this year, actually, depending on how he can improve his movement stuff and control doesn't really even need to bring it up that much hopefully we can bring him up around june july so definitely going to keep my eyes out on this cody reed guy um rookie davis another guy who seems like we could potentially bring up too uh who's the other guy so it looks like we have pitchers that we could potentially work around he needs to work on his control quite a bit i'm not liking what i'm seeing with that control although he hasn't really walked too many in his previous but that's low ball you know Blandino's 23 in double A I mean he did okay but I don't see if he should be called up he still needs to work a little bit on some of his metrics too I can see why all right so they do have some prospects to work with so it's just like a rebuild basically I just have to try and be smart with my trades Try and be smart with my contracts and see if I can keep us not going broke and not having horrible uh, development on these guys. So I'm going to go off screen and I guess I'll keep this to a less than 20 minute episode and I'm going to do all the stuff that I want to do for personnel. I'm probably going to fire some of these guys and uh, bring in other people who I like. Uh, like if I see a, pros uh, a certain level that has you know a lot of good hitting prospects, you know I'll make sure to ha that they have the proper pitching and hitting coach, you know, for all that, if they're a hitting coach, and if they're, you know, good pitchers, then I'll make sure to give them a proper pitching coach, and I'm definitely going to get a new scouting director, because this guy's good, 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 excellent, which isn't that bad, but I want to see if I can get someone that's excellent all across the board, maybe some outstandings here or something, but he does favor tools, which is good, because I favor tools quite a bit, so that's what I'm going to be looking for, and, uh, yeah, next time I, I make an episode, I'll probably have already simmed. I'll, I might do like a first little mini clip where I show everything that I'm going to do before I sim, and then start the sim and show that. So uh, yeah, you're probably going to see quite a bit different. This is just me looking through everything. You can see my thoughts, see how much I understand about the game. So as you can see, I'm very new, or not new, but I just don't really have the best knowledge. So you, you can definitely see that I, I'm not the best at this. So. Hopefully you enjoyed and it wasn't too boring and I'll see you next time.